Hey, it's Kurt Thompson, TrumpetSizzle.com, and I am back with yet another review. And this is for you low brass folks, trombone players, euphonium players, alto horn players, baritone horn players, tuba players. And um, so I got this Kelly plastic. Looks like the, the smaller shank... Um, so I'm not sure if it's a smaller shake, but, um, but we'll find out. Uh, it's the either the trombone or the baritone horn version of their mouthpiece. And a while back, I made a, a pretty nice solo with Herbert L. Clark and and the baritone on something I would consider pretty difficult for most professional baritone players to do. I mean, on the spot, without a lot of a lot of studio magic um, involved. And uh, you can go you can go check me out on that. Uh, and it was not on the um, highest quality the quality of horns. I mean, it wasn't on a Besson, it wasn't on a Bach, it wasn't on a Yamaha. Uh, it was some uh, beat up old horn, but it but the horn plays okay. Uh, anyway, you, you can go and check that out. Uh, my point is, you, you know that um, you know I can I can do a little baritone, a little euphonium, and some French horn when need be. So let's check out the purple Kelly trombone mouthpiece. Or if you're euphonium or baritone, I think it'll probably work for almost all that. Let's see here. Yeah, if I can get it out, okay. There we go. Man, let me whip up my. This is the baritone horn that I used uh, for that Herbert L. Clark solo. It's ice cold, but we're going to warm it up. Well, let's just see this. Looks looks like it might be a large shake. Let's see. Um, okay, it goes in, but it only goes in about a half an inch. Um, I'm still going to use this, but um, probably this this will probably be maybe better for um, possibly euphonium or trombone. This this um, accepts a smaller shanked mouthpiece. So anyway, we'll go ahead and give it a run through. It's in there. Make sure the valves are going. And let's just see how she sounds. This is the Kelly Baritone Euphonium Trombone Mouthpiece. Okay, I can be able to control the dynamics on it. Not bad. Uh, let's try a couple little intervals. Slotting pretty good. I'm impressed. I was impressed with the trumpet mouthpiece that Kelly makes and now I'm my in, my good impressions are continuing. The good vibes are continuing. Uh, this is pretty decent. Um, <laughs> I'm impressed. It's a great mouthpiece. It's locking in. It warms up right away, which is something I'm not used to. Now, I said the horn was cold. The horn is still cold. The mouthpiece is warm. Okay, I know you, a lot of you guys are interested in being able to go um, up to the, the high C, the high D, the high E flat. 
What the heck? I mean, let's try the high E flat. Why not, right? That doesn't sound right. Uh-oh, I think I might be in trouble here. <laughs> I was hoping it was going to be lower. That's why I played the first one lower, but um, doggone it, it's going to be higher. Okay, um... Kelly Purple Low Brass Mouthpiece is kicking some butt. I really can't believe it. Let's do a little, maybe um, a scale pattern on it. for all the chips but um, I don't play this every day and I'm on a new mouthpiece but still being up there in the clouds like that let me give it another shot I mean I bet if I spent some time with this combination I could get it down pretty good sorry about that <laughs> I'm not used to this combination able to get up in the clouds where I know a lot of you would like to be able to play and I'm up there I'm I'm totally out of my comfort zone I'm on this big low brass instrument and a new plastic mouthpiece and I'm kind of pulling it off um, and that has to tell me something I mean the, the mouthpiece is worthy the mouthpiece is the real deal and if you have to not so much in America but I know other countries uh, especially, um, I'm thinking, trying to think of some places with some cold environments. I know over in Europe, um, well, England, the UK, I know brass bands is, and brass banding is uh, uh, very, very popular. And of course, those bands have a lot of low brass, like baritone horns, alto horns, euphoniums, and tubas. So, and you have to play outside sometimes, right? I could see this being a worthy adversary to fight the cold and the elements. Um, if you're in the UK or if you're in England, Ireland, um, anywhere in that vicinity, it gets cold. I've been there in December. I've been in London in December, and it's uh, freezing cold. So uh, anyway, this is my review, my impression. And you also have to think, I am not a full-time euphonium, baritone, alto horn, trombone player. I mean, you, this should be a, the second part of your thought process is that you know Kurt Thompson primarily is honking away on a trumpet. And I'm picking up this horn, which you know I don't, I mean, how many times do you see this in a video? Not much. The thought process that you should let run through your brain is that, wait a minute, Kurt's not even a full-time baritone player. And we know he mainly always, always plays trumpet, but he put this thing together and on the fly, and damn, I mean, he's playing the E flats and F's better than I can. You know, maybe there's something worthy of this mouthpiece that I should try. I'm not saying the mouthpiece is going to give you, you know, rock solid E flat and F like you just heard me do, and also in that scale pattern. But what I'm suggesting is the mouthpiece is worthy. It's the real deal. Kurt Thompson, TrumpetSizzle.com. I'm a trumpet player who sometimes plays the low brass and also French horn. And of course, as you know, I like to do a little singing. So, uh, trumpetsizzle.com. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, the price point's just outrageously low for mouthpieces. 
I don't know what it was, um, under 50 bucks, something like that. I mean, you just can't beat it. So I'll catch you next one. See you then.